All right, in this video, I want to give an overview of some of the applications of electromagnetic fields, um, some of the history of electromagnetic fields. It's actually a subject that is rich in history. And uh, then we're, we're going to say a little bit more about the way our particular course is organized. So let's get started. All right, about those applications. So there are many different and interesting useful applications we have for electromagnetics. One of those would be like wireless communications. Okay, and related to that is radar. Of course, all of these are related. They're all related by electromagnetics. Uh, another one is invisibility. Invisibility. So there's a lot of research going on about inv uh, invisibility. Not only um, you know how to make planes invisible to radar, but also you know in the in the literal sense of of making objects invisible to the human eye. And about that, then the the application another application we have is the behavior of light. So tied up in all of this is the way that light behaves. Um, then uh, maybe maybe kind of different from those first four, uh, on the surface anyway, is electric power generation. Right? We can generate AC power, DC power, electric power generation, and transmission. Uh, medical imaging is another one. This is big. If if you can bring in the medical field into what you're studying, then that that is big. Lots of money in that field. Medical imaging. Um, so for example, um, MRIs, right? CAT scans, X-rays. Also, photos and photocopies. Photocopies. Like Polaroid and Xerox. And then also, electronic circuits. I know that some of you uh, in this course are studying analog electronics. So the way transistors both uh, junction transistors and field effect transistors. Uh, both both of those guys, the way they work is based on the principle of electromagnetic fields. All right, and then uh, academically, so this course is unique in how succinct uh, its course goals can be stated. So, you know, on the first day of class, you always talk about course goals and, and, and this stuff. So the, the goal of this course is to understand four equations. Understand four equations. That's it. That's your job as a student and as a professor. It's my job to communicate those four equations to you. And that's that's it. That's the goal of this class. Now you can you can break these down. Of course, you can you can say, well, the goal is to um, understand qualitatively what they say. You know, so you could describe it to somebody who is not an engineer, and you could break it down. And say uh, the goal is to mathematically, you know, rigorously apply these four equations to situations, and you could say, um, you know, the goal is to improve your math skills. Uh, actually, I say all of these things on the syllabus, but really, th it comes from these four equations. There are four equations that uh, you know are paramount to the study of electromagnetic fields, and we're just aiming to understand those four equations. Okay, so one of my favorite things about the study of electromagnetics is the history behind the field, and. Uh, I'll start out by saying that there's an entire branch of mathematics called vector calculus that was invented 
uh, for this specific subject. So uh, vector calculus was invented for electromagnetics. How cool is that? So calculus, you know, was invented by Isaac Newton for um, physics, essentially. And then vector calculus was invented for electromagnetics. Now, there, there, are, there are some other applications to vector, of vector calculus, like to uh, the study of gravitation or the study of fluid flow. Okay, but of course we're going to use it for EM, but that's why it was invented. So that's pretty cool. Um, experimentalists like Michael Faraday, you know, and Ampere, uh, they were unable to write down uh, what it is that they were witnessing. So you know they were experimentalists. So they you know they were doing these uh, experiments in in electricity and magnetism. And so they could they could qualitatively say you know what was going to happen and they could demonstrate what was going to happen but they couldn't write it down okay because they were experimentalists faraday ampere so then there was this mathematician around the same time uh, maxwell james clerk maxwell and so he's the one maxwell was the one who invented vector calculus so faraday and ampere and and uh to a lesser extent gauss come to maxwell and they describe what the, what it is that they were seeing Maxwell invents vector calculus. I'm going to write his name down because it's that important. He invents vector calculus and then he is able to write down what Faraday, Ampere, and Gauss were telling him. And so he writes down these four equations and uh, those are called Maxwell's equations. So that's kind of neat. Um, because the equations are called Maxwell's equations, but but really they started as Faraday and Gauss and Ampere um, laws kind of, but um, you know Maxwell gets the most notoriety. So uh, this will tell you something about the power of mathematics. Just this guy was just able to write them down, and so he gets the credit essentially. Um, so. Another another neat thing about the history of mathematics uh, of electromagnetics um, is that uh, in, there is an understanding of light that was kind of previously unknown. I mean, there there were some things that were known about light before Maxwell, um, but it was not known that light was an electromagnetic field, and so Maxwell's working on these equations. And then, bam, he is the only person in the history of Earth that understands that light is an electromagnetic wave. And so there's this understanding of light that was previously unknown that emerges from the work of Maxwell. And so we'll have more to say, of course, about that. But uh, we now understand light because of electromagnetics. And um, also in history, we all know about Albert Einstein. Oh, yes, Albert Einstein this, Albert Einstein that. Uh, Maxwell's work, so uh, I'll just say Maxwell's work, uh, was the primary influence for Albert Einstein, believe it or not. So you might hear things like Einstein rides on... on uh, on, on uh, Isaac Newton's shoulders, that people used to say this. Einstein rides on Newton's shoulders. And Einstein would say, no, I do not ride on um, Newton's shoulders. I ride on Maxwell's shoulders. And that's because um, well, people, people think that Einstein's work is related to you know, uh, Newton's work. That's because Einstein refined Newton's work of gravitation. But what Einstein really did was he took Maxwell's um, equations, which were related to electromagnetism, which is related to vectors, and he applied them to gravitation. And gravitation is also described as a as a vector field, and so so he took 
these electromagnetic equations and applied them to gravitational fields and then out popped you know Einstein's work so he rides on the shoulders of Maxwell that's what that's what Einstein himself used to say okay so you see that ma uh, the mathematics is going to be huge in our course right and actually what we're going to do is we're going to strictly focus on the mathematics at the beginning of the course the beginning maybe quarter you know 25 percent with very few applications um, and and we're gonna reserve those applications of electromagnetics to the remaining 75 percent of the course so we're just gonna start out with the mathematics and uh, I like I like doing this this is how electromagnetics was taught to me okay if we do the other way which is it's which is the usual way that electromagnetics is taught that is learning the mathematics and learning the electromagnetics at the same time that confounds the problem I think as a student now you've got two things to worry about learning the electromagnetics learning the mathematics so what we're going to do in our course is simply learn the mathematics first with very few applications so this way you're, you're isolating the issue you're isolating okay the mathematics so let me just take care of the mathematics first and then we'll take care of the electromagnetics for the, the remaining 75 percent of the course this is the way that I was taught this is the way I, I, I think it's taught best the only issue and it's a small issue then if you learn it this way is that you have you the student has have to trust me that there are applications to the mathematics that we're going to cover okay because at first it's going to look like oh the, you know this is just pure mathematics why do I need to know this trust me I would not be taking the time to explain the mathematics if we were not going to apply it okay so about those mathematics let's have a look <laughs> 